Welcome to another CTV Sports presentation. CTV Sports is brought to you by St. Clair Chevy, Buick, GMC, We Care. By Murphy Inn, Restaurant and Hotel in St. Clair. By Ackett Soups in Adair and Marine City. By North Star Bank, North Star guiding the way. By St. Clair Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, We Care. By Neiman's Family Market. By St. Clair's Ace Hardware and by CTV, Community TV in Marine City and St. Clair. Brad Robbins, Sam Schwaia for CTV production of the MHSA district opener for the St. Clair Saints varsity boys basketball team is they've traveled to Marysville to face the host Marysville tonight. Coach Sean Shero and the Saints take on Coach Ryan Bewer and the Vikings. We're going to send it down for the national anthem and the announcement of the starting lineups. We'll be right back for a little pregame, uh, get it going right away. All right, there you have it, Sam, the starting lineups for both squads in tonight's district opener. Uh, 
a challenge for both teams to have to come out and play a rivalry game right off the right off the bat and what can be a, a grind to get to the district final on Friday, especially in this particular district with all the athleticism. Both teams, uh, no matter who comes out of this one, uh, are going to be battle tested, but probably a little bit tired going into that Wednesday contest. Hey, yeah, you have Clintondale waiting. I mean, you have Clintondale waiting on Wednesday. Like you said, a lot of athleticism in this district, and it's going to be a dog fight tonight. And it'll be even tougher one on Wednesday. Who's ever lucky enough to get through today? A lot of youth starting on both sides. Marysville goes to two sophomores in Hinkley and Kiger. St. Clair goes two freshmen and a sophomore with Davidson, Madison, Matson, and Williams. Vikings got the best of the Saints uh, in St. Clair early on in the season. I believe that was. In mid-December, uh, be interested to see how how different the teams are now, uh, how much better they've become, and see what shakes out tonight. I know it was a close battle. Uh, if memory serves me correct. Hinkley hit a three-pointer late in that game to uh, give Marysville a late lead that they held on to. And when I say late, I'm talking seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting tonight. We're underway here. The Saints won the tip. Ben Davidson missed the three, and loose ball goes out. And Davidson was a little long on that. I mean, first shot, he's probably a lot of nerves running through him. Got to get the, got to get those first few out of your system, then you'd be good to go after that. That's to be expected a little bit. Going to struggle to get shots early. You know, you always find in these contests, though, kids settle down relatively quick. They get the cotton uh, out of their mouth a little bit, and they start to play. And same thing. We just saw Kiger right there with a good drive from Marysville. I think he had beaten open. He left that pass a little high. You see Marysville in their, Marysville in their standard 1-2-2. Two, two. They'll drop back to a 1-2-2 two, two in the half court as well. I know that'll be a big emphasis for St. Clair. You got to imagine they've spent a, a good amount of time moving the ball against this 1-2-2 in two, two a scout. Uh, hard to simulate a team that does it all the time and plays it at a varsity level. Quick ball movement there. Attempt by Davidson, can't get it. They're going to get Clark Lamb over the top there with a push. That's something that St. Clair's not going to want. You don't want to see Clark Lamb in early foul trouble, so a minute and two seconds into the game here, and he's going to have to be really careful. The ball was tipped. She, uh, the ref, the ref that was far away called the ball, marries the ball. Uh, I believe Toby got a piece of that before it went out of bounds. She was at a tough angle. Nice job by the officials getting together and getting it right. Didn't go our way, but it's probably the right way. Saints look like they're out in 2-3 here. Patterson's long gun, no good. Kelly with the rebound for Marysville. Kelly, a leader for them. Senior guard, good player, not super sized, but got some good skill. You see Kiger with a great move there, going baseline, spins back to the middle, go up, goes up and finishes with some contact. Does a great move by the young sophomore. That looks like that one's going to go against Clark Lamb as well. So, a uh, minute and 25 seconds into this basketball game, I got to imagine Marysville's got exactly what they want with Clark Lamb in foul trouble. I think that one was on, I thought that was on Ben Davidson, but Coach Sherrill didn't reach for the bench. The display early was that it was Clark. We'll see if they change that at all. There's Lamb with a quick bucket, makes it three to two, Marysville leads. That's what St. Clair's do, be able to Beat that press, get the ball down court quick. Get it middle, that's where Lamb will be his most, be at his best. Classic backdoor Albion play there for Marysville. Hinkley hits Kelly on it. And Kelly knocks it down. That's something that I know. You walk away from this basketball game, it ends up being a close game. That's probably something that they've scouted and run 15 times at practice. And for that to get you, that's going to bother you. Williams tries a gap, can't get it, loose ball. Matson does a nice job of getting the ball into Williams in the middle, and he draws a foul. Yeah, you can see Coach Sherrill right now <laughs> keep the ball out of the corner. That's where they will trap that aggressively. If you're able to skip out of it, it's fine, but they think let the pressure get to him there, and that trap caused a little havoc. Well, that's something that Coach Sherrill and I talked about while they were practicing against the scout team was if you want to get it to the corner, that's fine, but you better be ready to move the ball and hit the open guy. And if you are that open guy, you better be ready to shoot. And 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 early on, St. Clair's done a good job getting the skips uh, as Williams misses the second. Yeah, you, you know, and going back to the one 2, two there, you're going to move the ball against it. I'm sure they did a nice job against the scout team. It's just, again, it's difficult to simulate a team that does it all the time. Really nice wrap around there. Brady Beaton gets a bucket. 
I think from Hinkley again, so he's I, got a couple assists. I thought that was Kiger, but it was a nice, nice uh, design play there for the Vikings. Williams, long gun, short. Got to be sure to get back on defense, those long rebounds. Kelly leads the break for the Vikings. Dylan Kiger with a bucket. He's got some good tempo early. And it's going to force Coach Sherrill and the Saints into a timeout. Just under three minutes into the ball game, Vikings lead 9-3. Kiger's doing a good job out there in the wing. Has a good pump fake. Uh, and the Saints seem to be leaving their feet for it. I'm not sure what the scouting report says on him shooting-wise, but I'm guessing it says close on under control and don't let him drive by you. And early on, that's been a problem. When we saw the first possession, he was able to drive and missed a pass to Beaton. In the last, he, he was able to drive, finish with contact. And then he was able to drive and finish there. And Clark with either one or two fouls, we're not sure yet. But he was a little, he was staying off that block there because he didn't want to pick up that, that next foul. I give some credit to Marysville too, being very aware, getting out on the break, being aggressive. If that second foul was indeed on uh, Clark, you're almost getting a free pass to go to that basket without him helping a ton. He's maybe going to wave a hand at you, but he, you know he's probably not going to step in there and try to take any charges, and he's not going to make any aggressive attempts at blocking a shot. Marysville changes the press up a little bit here. Looks like it's man-to-man. -man. We'll see if they run and jump it a little bit. It's a 2-1-2, actually. Good job by Lamb, flash middle. Into the corner again with a skip. Going to have to get that ball into Lamb on these skip seal looks. Lamb doing a good job of actually getting a pretty good seal. Guard's got to be aware and look in. Madsen from 15 feet. Looked like he got hit on the arm there. Finished anyhow, 9-5. to five. But good job. You can see Marysville, a lot, of, a lot of concentration focus on Lamb. Madsen able to flash high post and get a good catch and good finish, maybe with some contact. Tried to go with a lob play there on the back side to Westrick, I believe. Yeah, Westrick has checked, checked in. Game. And number 40, Schroeder, will check in too for the Vikings. Yeah, really similar makeup between the two teams. Some good young athleticism out on the perimeter. You got some senior bigs uh, kind of provide that leadership. Clark Lamb on one end, Brady Beaton on the other. And now it might be time for St. Clair to go inside to, to Lamb on the offensive side. They brought Beaton out, who's a little stronger, I think, than Schroeder physically. And Lamb has, might, might have a better matchup here with, with Schroeder. Williams with a the block there, running the fast break now for the Saints. They're going to get Adam Tolby with a charge there. That'll be his first. I think you got to give some credit to... Uh, Ross Hinckley, uh, early on here, I'm really impressed with the way that he's, you know, kind of led the offense and done a nice job of getting to the bucket. And I think I expected that more out of Kelly than I did out of Hinckley. And he's doing a really good job here early. Good job by Clark Lamb stepping up there to steal a deep pass that would have had Kelly open for a layup. Schroeder working with Lamb at the block. You can hear Coach Cheryl up here wanting to get the ball on Clark. Barking orders, we got Matson on the wing, long gun, can't get it. They're gonna get Davidson over the top. You know, I think there's been a couple here early. Uh, the one on Clark, I wasn't quite sure of his first one. Um, that charge, I wasn't a big fan of, but that play right there, then Davidson needs to understand. He's not in possession there. He's gotta let the kid board the ball and go play defense. Saints yeah. are gonna apply a little pressure themselves here. Kelly with a wing three in transition. Short can't get it. Looks like that went off of Darian Rutledge. It'll stay with the Vikings. <laughs> Kelly tries the gap and kicks it out. Double dribble call on Kiger. Must have must have caught that in a short half. Number eleven. Number 11, Phil Griefor, and number two, Taz Rhodes, checking for the Vikings. They go pretty deep. Coach, Coach Bewer is not, a, not afraid to play a lot of guys. Buddy Broski checks in for the Saints. Press bothers the Saints there. I think uh, Schroeder got away with a travel on the steal, and there Eric Williams kind of brings it up a little bit careless, and Schroeder does a nice job coming and back tipping him, gets Marysville another possession. Yeah, not the cleanest start to this game, but... We said we're not surprised at that. I mean, a lot of, lot of pressure on these guys coming out. 
Three minutes left in the first. Nine to five, Vikings lead. Marysville doing a good job in the glass right now too. They're out working St. Clair. Ben Davidson with a good board, undersized in that one and comes down with it. Saints need to settle into their half court offense a little bit. Marysville doing a nice job of applying pressure. Here you just see man to man out of the Vikings. Probably not as afraid to go man to man when Clark Lamb's out of the game, but there's the risk you take when you try to keep Eric Williams in front of you with that length and the change of pace that he's got in small spaces, gets himself to the foul line. And we've seen all year, he has, he has a knack for, for uh, tough finishes around the hoop, and he's able to get there. There's times you think he's not going to get there, and he's able to slither by somebody and get a shot up. And we saw that right there. There's a nice lane for him, and he's able to fin or get fouled and go ahead to the line. I'd like to see him make his free throws, though. It puts him at one for three so far for the game. Something looking back, if you're gonna be aggressive and get to the foul line, you gotta cash in when you get there. And we've seen uh, both sides of that coin for St. Clair this year in covering their games. Uh, we've had nights where it's been really effective from the foul line and other nights where it really cost them or, or kept them out of the game when they're trying to get back into one. Saints stay man to man. A lot of switching actions though for the, the Saints. Buddy Broski working on Deshaun Kelly for the Vikings, trying to keep it out of his hands. Nice back door cut there. And Darian Rutledge not able to move his feet in time and he's gonna get called for a push. As they ring this foul in, uh, Kiger and Hinkley will check back in along with Beaton for the Vikings. Yeah, for playing rotation, Sam, you're right. You're talking about two minutes remaining in the first quarter and they've already given three of their best players uh, a rest. And that's uncommon, you get this deep into the season, usually the playing rotation is your, your two best players are gonna take a couple of turns here to get an extra break, and then you don't see that uh, very often for them to go out that early. Credit to the bench guys though, came in, did their job. Hinkley gets inside, drops it off for Beaton, and Beaton with a nice two-handed power layup finish. Makes it 11-6, Vikings. Marysville doing a good job, being patient in their half-court offense, something Coach Cheryl would probably like to see out of his. Vikings go back to the 1-2-2. Two, two. You know, I've noticed uh, early on here, the Saints have gone to a 2-3 a couple of different times, and that time it was a baseline on a bounce play. They've gotten gapped. Uh, in other words, the, the ball handler's gotten into the paint. Both times I've seen them run it, and if you want to run an effective zone, you guys got to, you know, they'll have to gap up and make sure that doesn't happen, because when it does, everybody moves, and they're able to drop... Uh, Bounce passes in for layups. And we were able to see in that last possession from Marysville as Davidson gets fouled. Uh, same thing, Kyger with a pump fake, and Kyber's able, like you said, to, to uh, exploit a gap there, which led to the pass to Kelly, which led to the pass, or the, sorry, the pass to Hinkley, which led to the drop down to Beaton. St. Clair right now, even in those skips, Sam, just they're just not as crisp as they need to be. They're gonna have to get some better ball movement and have to be a little more confident with the basketball. Nice flash there by Eric Williams. Can't get the five footer to go. And then they're gonna get Darian Rutledge for being a little bit too aggressive and trying to pull down that offensive rebound. It's going the other way. Saints already with 16 fouls so far. A minute left to go in the first. Adam Toby comes back in, replaces Eric Williams. Yeah, fouls are six to three. Both teams have been aggressive. Can't say that that's, uh, those are the wrong numbers, I think. Kids are just not in control of their body right now and need to make sure they get it under control. The next time Marysville draws a foul, they're going to be shooting foul shot. I watch the back door there. Good job by the Saints to have that covered. Not a lot of help coming off of Kelly, so it's going to be about Hinkley here and some of the other guys for the Vikings. They're gonna get Kiger over the back of Adam Toby that time. That's, be, that's a big foul for me. That's Kiger's second as well. And he's been kind of a catalyst in their early going for Marysville. We'll see if that has an effect on their offense and their, their ball movement that they've, they've had success with in offense so far. He's been the guy in a lot of those gaps, he and Hinkley. 35 seconds to play. Let's see if the Saints can get a good look here. Finish the half on or finish the quarter, pardon me, on a high note, rather than kind of how it started off. Forced pass in there by Matson. Rutledge can't come up with it. 
And Hinkley brings it back up. Looks like Coach Bewer wants to try and get one shot here. Saints stay man to man. Well, five seconds left in the quarter for the Vikings. Hinkley from deep, can't get it. If you're St. Clair, you don't mind that defensive rotation. Uh, they wanted to play for one, and really all they got out of it was a deep three by Hinkley, you know, a, a formidable shooter, but a hand in his face and contested, and they didn't get any second looks out of it. So it's going to take us into the second quarter. The Vikings lead 11-6. to six. St. Clair's Ace Hardware in the Riverview Plaza is now open seven days a week for your shopping needs. Everything you need from auto supplies, wiring, paint, craftsman tools. St. Clair's Ace Hardware has picnic items, a complete gift department with candles and more. Don't miss the specials on Valspar paint. St. Clair's Ace Hardware in the Riverview Plaza. Ackett's Soups from Scratch has a new location on King Road in Marine City. Ackett's Soup from Scratch features all of their famous soups, but now they have a complete lineup of lunch and dinner items for eat in or take out, and even frozen items for heat and eat. You know Ackett's Soups are made from scratch. Fresh vegetables, herbs, and hand-rolled noodles. Stock simmered for long hours to bring out aroma and flavor of real homemade soups. Ackett's Soups from scratch in Adair, and now also in Marine City on King Road. Hi everybody, it's time to make a quick road trip to St. Clair Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram where we make buying fun with great service and great deals like these. During the summer clearance event, lease a Ram 1500 Crew Cab 4x4, Bighorn Edition for just $99 a month. Or lease a 2015 Chrysler 200 for only $132 a month. There's also 0% financing and St. Clair has over 700 vehicles available. So make the quick drive down I-94 to exit 257 at St. Clair where we care. And it's kind of a, a tale of two teams. I mean, if you're Coach Cheryl and the Saints, you're probably looking up there happy you're only down five. And if you're Coach Bewer and the Vikings, I mean, there might have been a little blood in the water there. And you look up and you're only up five. I mean, like we talked about, looking back later in games, that, that could be a big deal because Marysville probably feels they should be up by more than five, and St. Clair's, they're relieved that they're only down five. So, I each coach, I mean, you can look at a positive for each way. Mary's well, they're leading in St. Clair that you didn't play your best and you're within striking distance still. Yeah, just a couple of possessions, but I really felt like, you, you know, you're right. In watching that quarter take place, that felt like a quarter dominated by the Vikings in terms of poise, in terms of executing the game plan. And I think the Saints were kind of scrambling a lot of their offensive possessions. There was a couple of them that they were just near misses and ended up getting a bucket on it. So St. Clair's going to have to shoot better. If, if Marysville's going to run that 1-2-2, two, two, Going to have to hit a couple shots off of those skips. Hopefully the nerves shake out here. Yeah, and like we talked about, those skips got to be stronger. There's a lot of air under those passes right now. they got to be got to be in a line if you're going to make those passes. Marysville really doesn't have much length at the top of that. So, I mean, those passes should be able to get there quicker and be Marysville ball to start the quarter. Yeah, you saw a couple of nice flashes by the backside guard on those uh, and missed those difficult six, seven-foot jumpers. Maybe a shot fake and get to the bucket and try to get yourself to the foul line is the best way to go there. That's not a shot too many guys practice a whole lot. Big, good defense by Toby there. That's a big steal for the Saints. We've seen in, in a lot of the games we've covered, Sam, is Adam Toby. He's not going to get you. He's, he's not going to get you a 20-point night, but he's going to make a few real big plays, and that might be one of them. Come out and get a stop that first possession. Uses his length. Going to get Lamb a touch here. He's going to go around beating for a deuce. And that's what St. Clair needs to be. That's what St. Clair needs more of if they want to get back in this game or stay in this game. Clark's going to have to eat a little bit. And he's going to have to have a big game for the Saints to win this thing. Saints jump, Toby. Toby again. Yeah, with that, with that long arm, Davidson forces a shot, can't get it. The Vikings run out in transition, and Kelly's going to turn it over. I think Coach Cheryl's frustrated a little bit right now with the hesitance that his kids have about throwing the ball into the post. I think from here and maybe from where Coach Cheryl's standing, it looks pretty obvious. Um, tough to speak for the guy holding the basketball, but it seems like they have some reservation about throwing it in, and that's really what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Mary's a little more of a 2-3 look now, it looks like, too. Saints are trying to adjust to it now. It's pretty wide, 2-3. Probably had to go to it after Clark 
goes in and gets an easy layup around Beaton on the last trip. Saints being real patient and methodical here, trying to find something that works. Deflect, another deflected pass, not with the strength that they want. Ben Davidson can't catch clean. He was going to shoot that basketball. Mares, Mares is doing a good job, rotating very well in the zone. Really good job, and one there. I'll tell you what, as good a job as Marysville did on that possession for St. Clair to come up and be that patient um, with all those missed catches and slower passes or tip passes to get that look right there. Adam Tovey with the assist to Clark Lamb who finishes with contact. I, I, I mean, I believe it was Westrick for Marysville. He was doing a good job, he, he clapped. I mean, he was encouraging his teammates. He clapped, and that's right when, right when Toby flashed behind him and was able to catch that pass and dish off to Lamb. Lane violation of the Vikings, too. And I'm not sure who she got, but I mean, that could, that's a miss, That's a point that's not on the board that St. Clair might be able to get back. 11 to 10, Vikings lead, awaiting this foul shot here. 6-18 left in the second quarter. And that is going to matter, and it's going to tie the basketball game. So the Saints strike it even here, right back to a brand new basketball game. It's a big possession there for, for the Saints. Big time to get a stop as well. Hinkley all alone, but a long gun, can't get it short rim. Davidson's gonna get a shovel three, and that's not gonna go. Good tap out by Clark Lamb to keep the ball, get another possession and a shot here for Williams. There's Toby, like you said, he's gonna make the big play. He's not gonna make every play for you, but he's gonna make the big one that you notice later on in the game. So far, he's, he's done a lot of the damage and getting uh, the Saints right back in here now with a two point lead with deflections and kind of being Johnny on the spot. Once again, I mean, you had Kelly driving there and Clark was right, I mean, Clark was in position, but he can't really contest right now and pick up number three. That's, he's too valuable to his team to, to be on the bench. Yeah, and I think if you're Coach Cheryl here, and I think there's a lot of coaches that you know, maybe would have Clark on the bench as a matter of principle, no matter what. But I don't think the Saints are in a position to sit him down uh, at, you know, when he gets that second foul a minute and 30 seconds into the game. Uh, you want to be in this game. You want to win this game and, and move on. He's got to play, and he's just got to be a smart senior leader and not pick up that third foul quick. And to start this game, both teams have not shot the ball very well. So, I mean, there's going to be continued emphasis in getting the ball inside to both bigs. Or can, if your Marys will continue to drive. To, to look for buckets because I don't know if we've had a three hit yet and there's been a, there's been plenty of good looks for both teams. That long skip nearly forces Williams out of bounds. He recovers nicely. Good hands on that play. Saint skips look a lot better now. It's going to help the ball movement. It's just a lot cleaner. Some good touches. You'll get more rhythm threes this way. There's one right there as we speak. I think he got short. a piece of it. I think Patterson was able to get a piece of it. Good job by Williams. Ready to jump that. I mean, that had been a big play for the Saints. Hinkley just wasn't quite aware and tried to shovel it right back to Kelly off that rebound. Williams almost came up with a big turnover. Brasky and for Toby. He, Toby set the tone this quarter for the Saints. Probably getting a breather uh, just because he, he probably told Coach Cheryl he was tired. He'll go. He'll be back in when he's ready to go. Saints look like they're in a 1-2-2 two, two of their own. Three-quarter court. Using Williams and his length at the top. Backside West. lob to Westrick. When I, when I, this wasn't accounted for. A lot of action there, a little bit of bumping around. That's one thing you like to see. If there's a loose ball, you don't like to see him call fouls. And that, that's not the first time they've let one go like that. I mean, if kids are going for the ball, they're, they're going to bump into each other. It's just kind of, it's the game of basketball. And to, those kids are playing hard. You want to reward them. That's going to be Davidson's third foul, I believe. Just not a very nope. good decision there by Davidson. Tried to he kind of telegraph the, a one-handed pass over the middle. That's his second foul. But nonetheless, you have two of your starters with two fouls with four minutes to go in the half. That's, that's a pretty big deal. Hinkley gets the first to go. 
So he will receive the bonus. Gets that one as well, makes it 15-13 Saints. So as soon as they got that 13 point lead, Marysville answers with a 4-0 run of their own, takes it back. All free throws, Marysville's made their free throws and we've seen St. Clair struggle from the line early on. What you can't have here in the cold shooting that's gone on for St. Clair, the game plan is gonna revolve to a degree around them moving the ball, getting those skips and taking the shot when they're open. And if missing is going to be something that is gonna make them hesitant moving forward, then there's not really a chance that you're gonna be able to beat that zone. Mm -hmm. Patterson and Schroeder back in for the Vikings. Tiger going to work on Lamb, who's in foul trouble, can't foul. Does a pretty good job there, uh, considering. And then they're going to get Schroeder on a push. And that's not the first time St. Clair's got burned on the backside of that press. Mary's are doing a good job getting it up, and they're, they're not able to finish. But that's, that's a good look up. I believe that was Kelly that threw that pass to Tiger on the streak. Yeah, if you're Tiger, I'm sure you want that one back. I think he anticipated more contact than he got from Lamb, and probably forgot that Lamb's not allowed to touch him right now. Marysville kind of settled into that extended 2-3 zone here, bubbling out and just keeping the Saints at way out on the perimeter. When they're in this, if you can't get the, uh, the touches in the middle, you're gonna have to put the ball on the deck and attack the gaps. That's the biggest difference right now. On this end, if St. Clair's in a 2-3, Marysville's not hesitant to throw up a shot fake and attack a gap and make plays on it. And right now, St. Clair is it's kind of giving the Vikings what they want in terms they're, they're of staying not, out on the perimeter. Not putting the ball on the floor. I mean, if it's extended that much, there's going to be some gaps to attack. And really, Ben Davidson has had some trouble throwing lob passes over top of the zone, and he's one of the better attackers. So he's going to have to put the ball on the deck and get and make some things happen, he and Eric Williams. In that rotation, they missed Lamb. Good ball movement here by the Saints. Marysville's zone's impressive, and that's what you have to do. If they're, I mean, on the skip like that, it's, it's tough for them to rotate over. And they're, I mean, they're going to be closing out. You're going to be going at them, knowing where you're going. They're not really going to have an idea. And that gap is there. I'll tell you, I'd be very impressed if off of a skip pass, Marysville is able to close out in good, in good distance and then take a charge mm -hmm. on that play. And Eric Williams did the right thing. Kind of been begging for that up here. Got to attack a little bit. Looks like we got some blood on one of the no, I, Saints. Oh, on his knee, Darren Rutledge a little scuffed up. Eric Williams at the line, shooting one and one. Saints trail by two. Rattles around, but it counts. He'll get the bonus. Mario Madsen to the table. He's going to check in for Clark Lamb. And you saw Coach Cheryl. He knew he was fighting. He was fighting with fire there. And the two guys he had with two fouls, they both came out here with about 2.50 left in the quarter. And I mean, you're back in the game. You guys, your guys just have to sustain this. Trail by one. You're going to have to settle down. You know, the kids that they brought in you're can play defense. Mm -hmm. Going to have to get stops on this end and execute on the other. Adam tolby has got... Pretty large mismatch down there at the block. Doing a good job, though. First three-pointer of the night. Patterson. Brosky from the corner. That's his area. Can't get that one to go. Josh Markle tried to corral that with one hand instead of two and make the next play, and that one goes out of bounds. So 18-14, Marysville ball. Hinkley will bring it up against Williams. Good hesitation dribble rejected there by Adam Toby. And just as soon as the Saints made a nice play defensively, they went down, forced the issue a little bit offensively, and the ball go right back to the Vikings. Yeah, it might have been the right pass. I believe that got tipped. Bounce pass might have worked a little, little better there for him. Saints are going to stay full court man. Buddy Brosky again chasing uh, Deshaun Kelly. 
and they're just facing them, and that's where Marysville is getting a lot of gaps. There's, I mean, you're taking away one guy from help side there. There's that mismatch we talked about on the last trip. Adam Toby giving up a lot of size to Schroeder, and that time he gets a seal, an on-time pass from Kelly, and he finishes the layup. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to see St. Clair try to milk as much time in this possession as they can. 20 to 14 right now, Marysville, and St. Clair just wants to go there and keep this deficit at six. I mean, it was 14 to 13. Another tip pass there. St. Clair is just throwing to a lot of hands right now. Not, not a lot of deception in their passes. Forcing the issue a little bit. Gonna have to find a way, and again, sound like a broken record maybe. Attack the bucket. These guys are gonna have to square the rim and look to go. Turnover by Rhodes. Looks like offensively here, they're gonna go with Lamb and Davidson. 56 seconds left. You gotta wonder if they do end up getting a bucket here, if Coach Sherrill's gonna burn a 30 second timeout right away, get him off the floor on the defensive end. All right, he might play for one here in the half as well. It may be by choice or just by a factor of the Marysville Viking defense doing a really good job of slowing down St. Clair. The Saints average about 55, 56 points per game uh, all year long, and right now they're sitting at 14, and there's 30 seconds left in the first half. Kick to the corner, Broski for three, can't get it to go. Saints rebound the loose ball. Davidson comes out with it. Might have got away with a double dribble there. 12 seconds remaining in the quarter. Marysville sticking with the extended zone. Williams goes to work against it. It's gonna, three point attempt, it's gonna be short. They're gonna get Lamb and Davidson out of here. You're saying Clary just can't give up a deep ball here. You want to make them put the ball on the ground. Long gun by Westrick at the buzzer. Won't go. And at the half, the Vikings, the hosts, they've got 20. And the Saints, the visitor, they've got 14. And the ball movement probably wasn't uh, up to snuff. And I know for certain that if St. Clair's gonna win this basketball game, they're gonna have to shoot the three a little bit better than that. Yeah, I mean, they shot a, they shot a couple early and then they kinda went away from it and you saw them come out after being down 11 to six after, after one, they came, they won up 13 to 11 and Marysville goes in the 9-1 run there in the quarter. And I mean, you have to give props to Marysville. Their defense, their zone defense has given St. Clair trouble. And I'm sure that's gonna be a talking point right now for Coach Shero. So we'll, we'll send it to halftime. We'll see you guys for the second half. Hi everybody, it's time to take a short drive down I-94 to St. Clair Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram where we're dealing on a huge selection of vehicles. Just listen to this. During the Auto Show event, you can lease a Ram 1500 Crew Cab 4x4 for just $93 a month, a Chrysler 200 Limited for only $99 a month, or a Dodge Journey all-wheel drive for only $74 a month. Those are some fantastic deals, so get in your car today. I-94, exit 257. Come to St. Clair and find out why we care. Murphy Inn, Restaurant, Spirits, Hotel, all in St. Clair. Before or after the game, stop at Murphy Inn. Different specials every day. Happy hour, two to six daily, and seven vintage hotel rooms. Half off large pizza every Monday, karaoke on Wednesday and Saturday, live music on Thursday and Friday. Murphy Inn has private dining area for showers and family parties. Murphy Inn, Restaurant, Spirits, Hotel, in St. Clair since 1836. Neiman's Family Markets, from produce, deli, bakery, meats, or even bagels. Neiman's Family Markets, they have it all on Kearney Drive in St. Clair. Neiman's Family Markets. Welcome back, second half action. Saints, are, Saints and Vikings getting ready for the uh, second half. Right now it sits at 20 to 14 Vikings after a Kind of an awkward paced first half. Both teams started out a little helter skelter and turning the ball over and Marysville kind of capitalized on that momentum in their own building. Saints rallied, 
were able to take a lead, and uh, Marysville quickly quickly regained it and, and really kind of just played better down the stretch. Yeah, the first absolutely. Half. I mean, they were the aggressor, uh, to just just to put it bluntly. They were they were the team that looked like they were more ready to play today and more aggressive and uh, not as, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, shocked by the lights on the stage in March. Um, they did a good job executing their defensive rotation in that zone was tremendous. Whether it was the 1-2-2 or the 2-3 that was extended out that we saw towards the end of the half, they did a great job in both of those. And I'm sure Coach Beavers just, just iterated that half to keep up that intensity on defense, and they're going to be fine. On the other hand, Coach Sherrill was probably saying, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure there was a lot, of, a lot of action on the grease board in there, but it's stuff that they probably worked on the two days prior coming into this game. Just some quick scores. Clark Lamb leads everybody with seven uh, for, Mar and for, for the Saints. Uh, for the for the Vikings, Kiger has five, and the next closest with them is Beedon with four. Good balance for the Vikings, and they'll be their ball to start the second half. Yeah, and as much as uh, Marysville came out, played sharp, was aggressive at least from our vantage point, and as much as St. Clair probably felt like they didn't do what they wanted, they didn't get what they wanted, and they played timid and, and not aggressive. St. Clair has to feel pretty good about just being down two possessions here at six points and. Played good enough defense to keep him in the basketball game. We saw Marysville trying to get a quick look, quick three for Kelly there. Um, Hinkley didn't quite have an, an angle on a pass to make the pass was tipped while it bounced. Saints in the extended 2-3 here. Let's see if uh, Marysville continues to attack those gaps like they did in the first half, which was really the difference between the two teams as the dribble drive. Good ball movement here by the Vikings. Backcourt does a good job. Hinkley, Kiger, and Kelly. And this is the pace Coach Bieber wants. In years past, his teams were more of an up and down, up and down team. And Kelly from deep. Can't get it. Backside rebound against the 2-3. Falls out of bounds off of Kiger, it looks like. The ball's going to go to the Saints, so they get a stop. That's one thing Marysville was. Marysville also got a lot of second chance in that first half, too. And they had another one there. Uh, Kiger was just wasn't able to keep his footing. Here you have a three-quarter court. Moving 1-2-2 two, two for the Vikings. Looks like they kind of took the trap off of the corner. And a good pass that time by Ben Davidson and Mario Matson couldn't come up with it. And it leads to a transition bucket for Deshaun Kelly at the other end. It opens up an eight point lead here after a Saints stop early, got what they wanted, and then they come down and turn it over. If you're St. Clair, that's a look you want. That's a pass that has to be caught. Lamb not guarded in the middle. He has to be able to make that pass sooner. Here's what they didn't do enough of, get into the paint and go make plays. Lamb, good job on the offensive glass, and he's going to draw a foul and go to the, the free throw line. Mm -hmm. You hear the Marysville fans, Marysville fans groaning. Uh, I don't know if Clark got one, but the shot before that, I thought Ben Davison on his putback attempt got fouled. So, I mean, they'll equal out. I like what I saw out of that possession, a couple of skip passes, and then Eric Williams just decided to put the ball on the deck and go make something happen. I think if... St. Clair can get some, some shots on the rim. They'll be able to continue to do that yeah. on the glass. I think one more dribble out of Williams in that drive, too, would have put himself in a better position uh, to make that layup. See St. Clair picking up full court on the man, or full court man now. Just try to speed the game up a little bit until it gets to the half court, maybe try to make them throw a, throw a pass, throw a bad pass, that is. Yeah, I think if you're, you're St. Clair, you've got to come out, and you want, this, you want the speed of this game to get up, up a little bit. And the first half was real slow. They were only able to muster 14 points. And, uh, and they're going to want to ratchet it up. So even if you give up a break here and there, I think they'd rather have Marysville running up and down uh, than settling in and getting the shots and you that they want. You see Kelly catch the ball in the post there. And if you're Coach, you're coach Beaver, you have to be wondering why they're throwing the ball to Kelly in that situation against, against Toby. Williams can't get the three-pointer from the corner to go. That's something we didn't see in the first half at all was St. Clair knocked down a, a shot from three. And that continues, but a nice adjustment. Eric Williams saved, saved the Saints there on the one end. Leads the break, hits Adam Tolby. Just like that, Saints have a little momentum and of their that's own. That's a big That's a great play by Williams. He's undersized against Bede, went up, was able to pin that ball against the foam, bring it back the other way and get the assist to Tolby slashing. You mentioned Adam Tolby. He was the, the spark plug in the first half. If anybody played well, I know Clark Lamb led in scoring, and he played fine but was in foul trouble. Adam Tolby went through a spurt where he was, again, causing problems and creating transition opportunities for the Saints. 
you can see Coach Cheryl trying to stress the point. He wants pressure on these guys. He wants them to come out and play. Going to get a touch for Beaton against Lamb. He's going to have a hard time finishing plays with his back to the basket. He's going to want those ones right there. He can hit that shot. He showed that in the first meeting. He's able to knock down that jumper uh, from 15 to 15 to 20 feet, or sorry, 12 to 15 feet. Saints a little confused on their alignment there offensively. Eric Williams had to come up and help out Ben Davidson. Short corner look for Matson. He gets his pass deflected. It's going to lead a three on two for Marysville. Adam Toby gets back into the hole, gets up and gets a block. Leads the break. And we're going back the other way, two on one. Nothing doing. And this is Long the rebound. <laughs> Looking for it to settle down a little bit here. Kiger with the long ball. Not able to draw iron. And that shot was a perfect illustration of the last 45 seconds of <laughs> basketball. It's been a little helter-skelter and out of rhythm. I think both coaches grasping for straws a little bit, wondering what their kids are doing. Clark Lamb with a good move, tries to go over Brady Beaton, well defended. Yeah, but that they have to keep looking. That was a good look, and Coach Beaver, Coach Beaver recognizes the game, probably getting out of the pace that he wants and able to get the timeout. Uh, to, to slow things back down. But back to that look that St. Clair got to land, that's a look that they want. That's a look Clark's going to make more than, more than he misses. Uh, they're they're going to have to go back to that well uh, later on in the game because Clark, Clark will, he has, a pretty, he has a pretty good height advantage on B and he's able to shoot over him. Yeah, that was a really nice job. Uh, the Saints did a good job, I think, of ratcheting up the pressure a little bit. Now, I think Coach Cheryl is okay with giving up a few transition opportunities because he's probably not as confident that the Vikings will finish on that end, and they've proven it here in the last couple possessions. Unfortunately, uh, we've looked just as bad coming back the other way and creating those transitions. So we've seen Williams to Toby on a nice dish and finish. Uh, need a little more of that, but done a nice job of bailing out at the end and getting some deflections and tips and forcing Marysville to play a little faster than they probably want to. It'd help with somebody take that lid off, too, knock down a three-pointer, honestly, too. Yeah, struggled from deep here. I, you know, we, we obviously don't have a, a statistics department, but I would put it at somewhere around 0 for 8 for the Saints and 1 for 8 for the Vikings. So not a shooting clinic uh, by either squad right now. Ben Davidson is going to draw a blocking foul and he's going to go to the line. Once again, though, I mean, you see a, a long miss off a three-pointer. I mean, Davidson took that in. Looked like Trey called me. Looks like uh, looked like Kelly was sliding or falling down when Davidson made contact with him. Uh, but that's um, the aggress be aggressive, go to the hoop. We just have to make our free throws. And he's just got to see the basketball go in the hoop one time. You can see uh, it's it's visible that Ben Davidson is a little bit frustrated with the way his game's been so far, um, and he just needs to get something to go. Matson leaves that one short. Davidson with a nice rebound, and that might be it. Really, it's. The psychology of the game can be tricky sometimes. It might be a little put-back layup that really gets you going. You saw he kind of short-armed his foul shots. It's really unlike him. Um, this is just a different stage than he's ever been on. 24-20, Vikings still lead here. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Kelly from the corner, nice take, good finish. For a small guy to get his arm extended like that and spin the ball, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that was that was a great. That was one of the better takes we've seen today. He doesn't go very big. He's a five niner. There's that short eight to ten footer we talked about it in the first half, and really those shots for the Saints looked ugly in mm -hmm. half one, and, and that looked like it was in rhythm. And Mario Matson does a good job of knocking it down. And really, it just comes to Clark's doing a good job clearing out a lot of space there, and they're they're counting for Clark and they're counting for the shooters. That middle is going to be open. You have to be able to exploit that and hit that shot. Vikings go to work on this end. Kelly with another three look, and he gets that one to go. He's heating up in this quarter. That's one guy. If you're St. Clair, you can't let him get going. He, he's a big part of their. He's a, he's their number one go-to guy. He's had a pretty good quarter so far. Saints did a real nice job on him in the first half, kind of traced him around with, with a guy and didn't help off of him. And that time he gets loose and knocks a shot down. The Saints kind of 
right here on this particular possession have gone back to how they looked a little bit in the first half in terms of throwing loose skip passes and, and not being as sharp. Davidson's going to try another three. Oh, <laughs> spoke too soon. It's going to be Matson from the corner. They're going to get Clark Lamb on the back end. And I'm going to say for certain that that's not his first foul. That's, that's his third. I, have I believe that's three. I have, it. I have him as three. He's going to come out here, get a quick breather. Mayors will up 29 22, minute 36 to go in the third. This is an important minute here for the Saints in terms of moving into the, the fourth. They got to get some momentum here. Marysville's done a nice job. Every time St. Clair's made a run, they've answered. You're getting a Princeton look here from the Vikings. A lot of pin down screens at the top. You're going to free up those shooters. Brady Beaton on a pick and roll is going to go in and draw a foul. And they're going to get Darian Rutledge for that one. And I think that was the right call. I think Ben Davidson thought he was clean up top, and I'd agree with him. I think officials did too, and that was on underneath Darian Rutledge. Brady Beaton knocks down the first. Can't get the second to go. Leaves Clark Lamb at the table. Might be just as effective. Gonna let Rutledge get a touch here down low. Moves it out. It's just not the same. You don't have to play the same type of defense when it's Clark Lamb, uh, or when it's Darian Rutledge, excuse me, as opposed to Clark. Darian does a good job of spotting minutes. But the size differential is significant. Davidson with a good take, can't get either one to go. He follows it up. 30 to 22 Marysville in the waning 30 seconds here. Big take by Westrick there. Like you said, that last minute was going to be big, and Marysville's extended their lead by three points, and St. Clair's uh, still not hitting their open shots. Coach Cheryl knows how important it is. Uh, even with these 22 seconds, he's got to get something that's a good look here um, for one of his shooters. I'm assuming he wants Clark back in the game. He knows that going in under, you know, going into that fourth with a 10-point deficit, that's a big hole to climb out. Of. Especially when you haven't hit when you haven't hit a three, you struggle from the line, um, and Marysville has the game at the pace that they want. That that ten point deficit will be tough to overcome. Just a thirty second timeout here. I think Marysville took one in the first half, so plenty of timeouts for both both squads as we will be momentarily heading into the fourth quarter. But we'll see out of this one what Coach Cheryl wants to get here, and we'll see if Coach Bewer was able to change up his defense or try to throw the Saints off. It looks right now like a 2-3 for Marysville, but they could jump out in something different. Looks like they'll stick with it. A foul on 23 Westrick. He was trying to clear out. Saints had a double screen set up on him. He was pushing his way through it. I was a little confused. I think the uh, preliminary call there pointed in the wrong direction, at least it looked like. And it cleaned up for me. I, I understand what happened there. Going to get Williams a three from the wing. It would been nice to rip the lid off of it on that one. It's going to be a long board. A nice job by Eric Williams. Missed the shot, chases it down, and knocks the basketball out of bounds. But Marysville is going to have plenty of time to get themselves a look and run a set. You see Toby in for Lamb so he doesn't pick up that fourth. Makes a little bit of a matchup problem down at the block with Brady Beaton. Long pass, fortunate there for the Saints. 
Hinkley wasn't able to control. I think he was looking to look like he was a pump fake and driving. I think he had some space there. Uh, Saints looked like they were over rotated again, and that, there would have been some room there for him. Let's see if the Saints can get a decent look here. Plenty of time. 4.7 seconds left. They're going to have to go the distance. Tough shot and can't get it. And that's the way it's going to be heading into the fourth. That's going to be Marysville 32, the Saints 22. And just when it looked like, I think it was 26, 22, looked like the Saints were crawling back into it, getting a little momentum. And just like has been the story of all night, Sam, Marysville does a good job, plays poised, cleans it up, and makes a run of their own yep. to finish the quarter. North Star Bank, guiding the way. North Star Bank is a true community bank whose loan approvals are made locally. They help keep our communities vibrant and growing by making loans to local families and businesses and reinvesting back into our community. From opening accounts to recommending products and services, they look forward to reach your financial goal. North Star Bank, guiding the way. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. All loans are subject to credit approval. And you mentioned that 26-22. That was the time that we came down, and I believe Kelly got lost in transition there, and he hit that big step back three. Uh, only the second three of the night for Mary's, only the second three night, uh, of, the, of the game total. And that happened to be a big one. That stretched to seven, and then they were, they were able to add three more on. And we've seen that St. Clair crawl in, and then Mary's will adds a run, and St. Clair hasn't been able to fight back at that run. But now it's in fourth quarter. You're going to have to fight back now and not let them back in it. You know, Marysville is the... Max Silver champion this year. So the Saints finish in the middle of the pack of the Matt Gold. Um, Marysville's going to have a little bit of that uh, that confidence in knowing that they can extend leads. And so when things go poorly, I think right now, just in terms of body language, you can see some of St. Clair's key players questioning what they're doing as opposed to just continue to attack. Whereas Marysville, when things are going poorly for them or when the Saints make a run, they really seem to respond in the right way. And, and they deserve some credit for that. Not only that, but the defense that they're playing is pretty significant right now to have St. Yeah, Clair absolutely. at 22 points. Looks like Mary's will be face guard. Looks like <laughs> I think that's grief for out there face guard and uh, Davidson. So, I mean, they still know Davidson can hurt them, even though he probably hasn't had his best game up to this point. Marysville and man-to-man, -man, which we haven't seen a ton of. I think this is where, if they're going to run man, this is where the Saints have to go. And if you're Coach Sherrill, you absolutely do not want Clark Lamb to pass the ball out of that spot. That's the shot you want him to take. It's a good look, and Jimmy just rimming off. It's been a tough night shooting wise for the Saints. That continues. I mean, a lot of balls just rolling off just like that. And Saints are going to have to play man to man, too, to speed this game up. And you see Coach Harrell yelling for him to come out. Looks like they decided to run a little 1 3 1. And that's the danger. <laughs> Well, it's sometimes watching at home and, and people don't realize when teams go into that 1-3-1, one, one, you have to throw long diagonal passes and not just one of them. you got to throw several of them. And right there, Deshaun Kelly's a really good player, um, but he just kind of illustrated how difficult it is to be accurate with those passes. Not everybody plays quarterback and can drop those yeah. in. And especially, it's a, it's a little alarming the first time you see it, too. You, t you tend to settle down, but like you said, that first time you see it, it kind of shocks. There's a lot of hands up and not a lot of space. See if we get Lamb come through again here. Got a foul on Marysville. It's going to go against Kelly, number 10. I didn't quite see what he did. I didn't see that one either. That was away from the play. I'll be honest, when that whistle blew, I thought it was going to be a moving screen on Clark Lamb. Fortunately for the Saints, it wasn't. And it, and it wasn't where the screen happened, so I'm not sure what happened. but. I mean, that puts Marysville at five teams. St. Clair is just two away Davidson from being in the, the bonus. Can't get it. And those, the last couple of looks out of Davidson have been pretty pure looks. Uh, with not a lot of adjustments needed, they just aren't dropping right now. They can't get it to go in the cup. The look into Lamb, trying to corral it. Kelly does a good job of stripping it away, and he's going to try to run at him. Six forty-eight to play. We've no seen, scoring here yet in the fourth. We've seen St. Clair with two or three good looks early on, not able to finish. Davidson goes right over top of Kelly. Big bucket there, out of some aggressive defense by the Saints, and they're going to extend this one-three-one. 
make the young guards of Marysville throw some long passes. Beaton does a good job making a catch, going underneath, using the backboard as a defender and drawing a foul. And there's that diagonal. That was a oh, that was a that was the good diagonal to throw. Beaton slid to an open spot, and that was a good pass. But that was the good pass by Kelly. Foul shots will loom large here as we go down the stretch. Brady Beaton's true again, knocks it down. Can't get the second one to go. Long rebound goes out to Matson. St. Clair's really not going to be able to be in the business of milking any clock on offense either. Gonna have to move quick, get touches. Lamb with a drip pass, some good ball movement. Davidson for three, can't get it, still cold. It was a great box out by Beaton. You saw Clark Lamb out by the three-point line after that ball hit the rim. Beaton doing a good job of moving him. Williams trying to work for steals at the top. Marysville doing a nice job making these passes without getting them deflected. Three from the corner. Patterson gets it to go. That is a big, big bucket here with 5.35 left in the fourth. You see Marysville making their big shot. St. Clair just getting them to rim off. Not very true tonight. Right and there, I, tough pass over the top. Matson's unable to catch it. And I think that would have been a good look for Matson too. I mean, the defense was pretty well spaced out. And that, Matson would have had time to set his feet and catch and shoot there. And uh, the pass is just off the mark. Here you see the Saints moving into man-to-man -man defense on the full, and this is this is do or die time for the Saints. You're down 12 points, and you're in the fourth quarter. You got to go to work here. Gamble for some steals. Try to get Marysville to play fast, and when you get a deflection on a three-pointer, try to come up with the ball and run. Mm -hmm. Nice job there, using his length again. Adam Tovey gets a piece of that three-pointer. They're gonna get Lamb. Lamb came down on that. If you just, if he would have stayed up, that wouldn't have been called. But as soon as your arms break, what they call it, that plane, it, that's gonna be a foul. That's gonna be his fourth, I believe, which makes it even more difficult for the Saints to get back into this. But I don't see him coming off the court. I mean, your season's on the line. You need your best player out there. Yeah, if you're Coach Cheryl, I don't think, you know, I think the only question you might be asking is if you want to try with five minutes here in the fourth still uh, to go offense, defense with, with him and, and maybe uh, Markle use some length if they're going to continue to run zone uh, or even man, somebody who can move their feet and help out a little bit. St. Clair fortunate. Westrick is able to miss both. Saints are going to have to push it a little bit here. Which is tough to do against the zone. It really is. If they're going to run a disciplined zone, pushing the ball out of stationary spots is tough. And you see Lamb just foul out. Coach Harrell's asking for a kickball there. And that is going to be Clark's fifth. So Coach Cheryl gets some time. And, and I'm going to agree with Coach Cheryl here, but I don't think that this is going to turn out in any way that he likes it. Um, I think that was a kickball on the pass that Mario Matson tried to make in there. Um, however, that wasn't his. That foot wasn't yeah. the only thing in the area, um, and probably should have made a little bit different pass. So Coach Cheryl's going to get some time here to take Clark Lamb off the floor. So that mountain that St. Clair had to climb just got a little bit bigger. When you lose, you lose your best player with 4.52 left in the game. That's, that makes it difficult. Yeah, and barring, uh, you know, not to, not to speak too quickly here, but, but barring a significantly nice comeback, uh, you know, something uh, beyond the norm, I think that might be the last time that we see Clark Lamb. So hopefully Darian Rutledge can come in and provide a spark and we can knock down some jumpers to give him another chance here. Get 
Marysville doing all the right things here in terms of moving the basketball, executing offense, getting good shots only, and now going to the foul line. And so with Toby, I'm sorry, with Brosky face guarding Kelly, that's why that lane's open, and that help side has to be there, be, uh, be ready to rotate a touch quicker. Really, when you're face guarding somebody, you're asking everybody else to make sure that they don't ever get beat. And it's easier said than done. It's a tough request to make. Right there we see Kyger do a nice job, rip through, go left-handed. Now he's at the foul line and he made his first. Can't get the second to go. Loose ball goes off to Broski, who plays just too fast again, throws that one out of bounds. So the Vikings, their lead has swelled to 13 points here with four minutes and 30 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. In the last game that we did, when the Saints played Utica, we saw how good they can play. And this game tonight, I think, I mean, when they aren't clicking, they're not hitting their shots, it's going to be difficult to beat anybody. And Marysville's a good team, and it's tough to play uh, this poorly offensively and hanging, a and hanging a game against a good team. And you have to be able to hit a couple threes, and, and we're with about four minutes to go, and we haven't seen one go down yet. Right, not, not being able to get the three-pointers to go in the cup is one thing. Uh, Marysville got exactly what they needed and wanted in having Clark Lamb with two fouls with about a minute to, you know, gone in the game. Uh, he wasn't able to be as effective as he probably wanted to be. And you see he's out of the game now with his five. So Marysville's game plan worked really well. And it's still, you know, it's still honestly got the Saints pretty stagnant on the offensive end. Rutledge with the rebound, outlets to Adam Toby, who's going to attack the rim. Ben Davidson looked to go, and he got grabbed, so he's... I think that last three-pointer by Kelly, I think Toby got a piece of that one, too. He's done a good job getting out and uh, maybe blocking some potential shots that the Vikings could have made. There's not a shortage of block shots or altered shots in this game, that's for sure, and it really, you know, Marysville's got 37 points here, but it hasn't been a shooting clinic uh, for either squad. Williams is going to let one go. He can't get it for the Saints. Good hustle play by Rutledge. Get really, the Saints in their possession. And really, it's going to get down to the point here where some of these guys are going to have to start letting these go um, from a little deeper, maybe a little quicker. Can't be real picky about shot selection when you need such a high volume of them. Williams gets all the way to the cup. Can't get it. And he was trying to tip it back in a really nice call, one that you don't see very often. The official is all over that one. It's going to send Eric Williams to the line. You got to knock these down. If you could score with the clock stop, that's that's pretty big. And also, if you make that second one, you can set up your press or the defense that you want to get into. I'm assuming we're going to see Mark will come in for Rutledge here to set up that defense. Yeah, you've got to go to some type of attacking press. Everybody's in the bonus now on the next one, so you can you can attack and then foul and Coach Cheryl's. You know, if he's got a scout on somebody who really doesn't shoot free throws well, you can extend this game and put that kid at the line if that's the way you want to go about it. Patterson with a long gun, probably not what Coach Beaver yeah, wanted there. If you're Coach Beaver, you're frustrated at that shot. Ben Davidson looked to attack, pulls it back out. Three minutes to go here. Williams does a nice job. Good spin move, gets held, and he's going to go to the line and shoot two more. So he's coming off two that he just made. Can get it down to single digits here with a couple of foul shots. And only 20 seconds gone off the clock. Yeah, Mr. Patterson's going to learn real quickly that in a situation like that, you want to work the ball around, and you're kind of probably in a layups only situation there if you're Marysville. Well, if you want that three, it's going to come after a significant amount of ball movement, and uh, you're going to be wide open. And right there, that was, I think, the first pass and a shot. So Williams splits the pair, pretty active at the defensive end. Let's see what the Saints try to do to speed up Marysville. They're going to get another three-point try. Westrick can't get it. Another big possession for the Saints, and Adam Toby comes up with a rebound. So a little life, down 10 here, 246 in basketball terms. That's quite a bit of time. And they're going to go to the foul line again. 
And if you're Coach Cheryl, I mean, the last three possessions, we've seen the Saints attack, 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 and what's happened? Free throws out of it. If you're Coach Cheryl, you're wondering, it's been 30 minutes in this game, it took us how long to do that? And your Coach Beaver's going to get a timeout. And I think it's going to be pretty simple what this conversation is going to be within this timeout. Well, and at the other end, St. Clair's doing a better job of being aggressive and attacking. I think if you're Coach Beaver, you, you got to go back to harping on what got you here, and that was playing good defense and not getting beat on those dribble drives. I think some of the Marysville players are frustrated that they feel like these are clean blocks. Um, but if you get beat in the first place, and it's, it's tough to rotate over every time and, and block the ball clean, and it's not like they're attempting charges. So, I mean, we talked about earlier, as soon as you break that plane as a defender, you go up and your hands cross that, uh, that, that vertical plane, they're going to call a foul. No matter if you get all ball or not, that's, that's the term in basketball they look for. Do not cross that plane or else that will be a foul. And that's, that's what's happened. I mean, we saw that call on Clark. We saw that call on uh, a few other St. Clair players. And, I mean, they've been consistent with it. And so here you have it. Saints trail by 10. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Got a little bit of life in them here. Have been able to at least get to the foul line, put a couple points on the board. Still unable to knock down a three at this time. And I got to imagine, Sam, if, if they are going to make this a timeout battle at the end, they're going to have to hit a couple threes here in the next minute yeah. or two. Well, I mean, split, splitting pairs of lines not going not gonna to cut that 10-point deficit down. So Adam Tolby, I believe, is shooting two. And he can't get the first to go. And so we've seen St. Clair miss their last two. A lot of opportunities, and they missed some earlier in the first quarter, too. I mean, those points add up late late in the game. Gets that one to drop. The first fortunate roll I've seen for the blue team today. They're going to get Brady Beaden on a deep pass. Buddy Broski contests with him, but not enough, and he's going to give up an and one here. So just as soon as the Saints cut into it, Marysville answers with a deep pass. And that's a good job out of that time. Oh, you know, Coach Bieber said they make that second shot. This is gonna, this is what they're gonna do, and they didn't waste any time. As soon as that ball went through the hoop, that ball was out of the hand, and Bieber was on the run and able to catch and finish. Brady Beaton shot foul shots really well tonight. He's had a few opportunities. Yeah, I have him unofficially right now at ten points. He's done a big game for Beaton. Can't get that one to go. The jinx is still good. But the long rebound is going to go to the Vikings, and Markle is going to pick up a foul, which on a loose ball situation is okay. Mm -hmm. And it's just tough. I mean, you lose with Clark, you lose your best scorer, you lose your best rebounder. You lose so much when you lose a player like Clark Lamb, it, it makes it difficult. You lose the space that he creates for those shooters as well, and the guys that got to double down on them or pay attention to the middle um, when they're in that zone, which has been really effective regardless if Clark was in there or not. You lose that space and you lose rhythm for your shooters. Two minutes and 30. Adam Toby brings it up for the Saints. Marysville sitting in a sagging man-to-man. -man. They're going to get a push. Eric Williams is going to go to the foul line. I mean, Mar Marysville's doing their best to let St. Clair stay in this game, missing free throws, uh, fouling, letting St. Clair score with the clock stop. But, I mean, like you said, it's going to take more than this. Well, at least now the Saints are in the double bonus. A couple of changes for the Vikings. Hinkley and Patterson return to the game. Williams can't get one to go. And they're going to get Markle here trying to fight around a rebound. Not the worst foul in the world. Uh, I mean, if that puts Marysville at the line, they're not going to get time to burn clock on offense. Uh, but you just hope that they that they miss their or that they miss the foul shots. I think they're still shooting one and one. It's going to send Patterson to the foul line. Really, just in terms of rhythm and, and tempo for the Saints, seeing some different things from them that we really haven't seen. Throughout the course of the season, you have Adam Toby bringing the ball up a lot, 
trying to set the offense and I'm not sure if that's by design so that Williams and Davidson can kind of set their feet on the perimeter. Um, but it's not really something that we've seen him incredibly comfortable doing. Got to imagine here, that ball goes through the rim, you got to go. Mm -hmm. And it does go through and it makes it 41-28. Vikings are in control here with 2.22. Left to play in the fourth. This last minute of this fourth quarter went by really slowly, Sam. It might have taken as much as the uh, the entire first quarter did. I felt like that really zipped by. A lot of free throws and not a, I mean, a lot of stoppages in play make for a long game. Adam Toby goes through the paint, Darian Rutledge tries to scoop it, can't get it to go. Then he does a nice job of getting a follow up. He can't get that one either and he's gonna draw a foul. Send Marysville back to the stripe at the other end. We saw the Saints a couple more layups just rimming off. I mean, basketball terms, you have one of those nights. You know, I mean, we've seen St. Clair score as many as 81 points in the game this year against Warren Lincoln. And you see them struggle to get to 30 here with under two left in the fourth. I mean, basketball can be a cruel game sometimes, and tonight hasn't been very nice to the Saints. But yeah, I mean, credit where credit is due. Marysville's played a great defensive game, and it, a lot of that credit goes to Marysville. Sean Kelly is going to get both and extend the lead to 15 here. Saints are just going to have to take some unpicky threes, like this one. Williams leaves it a little short, long rebound. And it's getting to that time. I think you're going to see some benches clear. Probably for both squads pretty quick. <laughs> Kelly with it now for Marysville. you got to imagine they're going to put their Foul shooters away, and St. Clair comes out. Allow those guys to get to the line. Ben Davidson with a good effort there. Can't finish the steal. It looks like Darian Rutledge is going to pick up, according to his body language, his fifth foul. Coach Cheryl is going to have to find somebody re to replace Darian as well. This is going to be number 33, Kyle Ritter, checking in for the Saints. Double bonus for the Vikings. Going to send Kyger to the line here, shooting two. Can't get the first. I mean, right now you only have Kyger with four points, but you have to give him credit for the way that Marys was able to start this game. Those four points care. Sorry, he has six points. Those six points came early and kind of set the tone for Marysville. Yeah, and he showed that he wasn't scared. He's, he's played a nice overall game for the Vikings. Knocks that one down. Minute 24 remaining. Ben Davidson gets the first three-pointer of the night for the Saints to go from the Viking logo with a minute and 15 left. It's nice to see it go in, but unfortunately, I'm of the belief, Sam, that that's going to be too little too late. Adam Toby from the wing. Three-pointer won't go. Battle for the basketball, and they're going to get Ben Davidson, I believe, with a reach-in foul. Going to send Westrick to the line, shooting two. First one for Westrick is no good, and you see Coach Bewer pulls everybody out of the lane here. They don't really, um, they don't want the Saints going to the foul line anymore. I think they'll be content to give up long threes and try to board them, and if the Saints want to go to the basket and try to get layups, Marysville's probably comfortable with that at this point. You 
And you saw St. Clair with the post entry there. Once again, I mean, that's not what you need down 13 with 48 to go. I mean, barring this next possession, I won't be surprised to see St. Clair maybe pull off. I mean, uh, with 48 seconds to go, tough, tough mountain to climb. The way Marys will shot free throws this fourth quarter, I guess you never know. <laughs> Let them stick around. Gonna have to board and run here if you're St. Clair. And go get a quick look at three, and it really doesn't matter where it's from. Davidson's gonna pull this one. I think if that goes down, you might see Coach Cheryl call a timeout there and try to set something up. But with 35.1 seconds left, the Vikings leading 44 to 31. Good block by Westrick there. And I think the Saints are gonna elect not to foul, um, which is to be expected. Sam being as biased as we are, I think you and I will both walk away feeling like the team that played better and maybe the better team won this basketball game early in the year. It was close. Uh, the Saints just didn't have it tonight, and a lot of that credit uh, for that is going to have to go to Coach Bewer and the Vikings. The game plan they executed was great. Uh, they caused a lot of problems for St. Clair shooters who took three quarters and seven minutes to finally hit a three and they held a team that averages about 55 points to 31 on the night. Uh, a lot of credit goes to the Vikings and the way that they played that basketball game, and they're going to move on as a result. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, I mean, they, they played better from the beginning. I mean, they, they, I don't know, St. Clair might have had the lead there for about uh, 30 seconds, 30 seconds stretch there in the second quarter. And after that, Marysville wasn't to be denied. They, the better team won this game tonight, and I'm sure if you ask Coach Sherrill to a man, he would tell, he would say that to you as well. Yeah, every time the Saints tried to make a run to get back in it, the Vikings had an answer for them, and uh, they deserve to win and move on on their home floor. They're going to likely play Clintondale. We didn't have a for sure, uh, but that's going to be here. The Saints, they're going to end their season tonight. And uh, again, thank you very much to Clark Lamb. Thank you very much to Adam Tolby. And uh, as they go out as seniors tonight, a lot of youth, though, as we've mentioned several times, so I'm sure in the offseason it'll be big. And, and they're going to use this as a little bit of motivation moving into the next season. So it's been, it's been fun covering what we can. I'm Brad Robbins and Sam Schweier for Logan Mead on the camera for us. We'll see you next year. This CTV sports presentation has been brought to you by St. Clair Chevy, Buick, GMC, We Care. By Murphy Inn Restaurant and Hotel in St. Clair. By Ackett Soups in Adair and Marine City. North Star Bank, guiding the way. By St. Clair Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, We Care. By Neiman's Family Market. By St. Clair's Ace Hardware. And by CTV Community TV in Marine City and St. Clair.